hopefully that is me live. Um, apologies in advance if the dogs are right royal nutters. It's been raining here in Scotland for three days, three months, forever. And the dogs have been constant. It's like having cats. They have been constantly asking to go out and then going out and going, no, I'll come back in. So I've done my full day's exercise in just walking to the door and walking back again with the dogs. Right, so what we're going to do today, going to be a bit of a felting video and, oh, I'm, <laughs> I'm actually on brand, um, Maker's Coffee Cup, because we are borrowing a tutorial from the makers. There is a link, there should be a link in the comments of this video to the tutorial. The makers have given us a free tutorial um, for, well, they're saying it can be a needle felted baby Jesus. If you want to felt along with me, this is a super easy one, but it looks kind of cute. So on season, it could be a needle felted baby Jesus, but um, what it was originally planned for is a little baby fairy for people who are making fairy critters, but it works equally well either way. So I'm gonna have a chat, I'm gonna have a try at doing that. And if anyone wants to join in, all you're gonna need is uh, most of one colour of wool that you want your baby wrapped up in, a little bit of flesh or whatever colour. If you want to make it a fairy, it could be any colour you want, really. I always think of fairies as kind of blue and green rather than human coloured. Um, and a small amount of some kind of colour for a tiny bit of hair. And that should be it. And before we do that, um, I, <clears throat> in my group, Pam Duffy's crafty friends you'd think I'd remember this it's been like a year in my Facebook group Pam Duffy's crafty friends um someone sorry can't remember who it was um posted asking about fibers that can glow in the dark and we had much conversations and everything and I ordered myself some and they came they came the other day so I thought I haven't opened them yet I'll open them live I will say this was very rather expensive i think for the actual thing itself <coughs> excuse me it was about six pounds for the product but the shipping was expensive i don't blame the person for the shipping being expensive i had to import them so it came to quite a lot i think when i checked it was like 17 pounds so yeah i do this so you don't have to but i do plan in the new year i said this this last week as well i do plan in the new year we'll try and do a project with what we've got if it looks good and we will also um try other methods to make to make fibers glow in the dark because i'm i'm surrounded by fibers so let's try some dyeing so that's the plan for next year Anyway, I see the lovely lily tree in the chat already. Hello there. Happy Sunday. Hope you're having an awesome time. And we have Sylvia. Hello there. So good to see you. If you're in the chat, if if you're here, pop us a hello. Let us know what you've been creating. This week, super good news. I am nearly, nearly, nearly caught up on my Christmas orders. The ones that have to go out for Christmas. This is the earliest I've ever been finished with them. I'm so pleased with myself because usually I am down to the wire, waiting, you getting them out by the last postal dates for Christmas. I've just got a few to, to sort out, I'll show you. This little guy just needs a fatter belly and then he's going to his new home. I love making bulldogs and stuff. They're, they're squishy faces and everything. Although I think as humans, we should be careful here. Here's my gentle rant, fuzzy rant. As humans, we should be careful when we're breeding dogs um, to make sure that we don't overdo it and go too far with features that limit the quality of life of some of the animals. And there are some breeds that I'm a bit worried about. However, felting certain things, great fun. And we can make them extra cute and extra wonderful. So there we go. Um, who else is here? We've got phoenix dragon um C cj happy to catch live today good to see you and sammy strawberry hello there see, i love it if you have these literative names um <laughs> roll off the tongue it's great Trans transformational healing by duana good morning from new york hello new york 
Uh, Lily's just been trying to sort out your craft stuff. Bad idea. Yeah, I keep thinking I want to sort out, I was going to say my craft room, my craft house. I, I have explosions everywhere. I, you can see some of the wool here, some of the wool there, some of the wool just everywhere. It's crazy. Um, but yeah. <laughs> so I keep meaning to tidy it up and I keep getting started and I get distracted and it ends up just looking worse every time. Sammy's making a barn owl, from, barn owl from a fuzzy wuzzy kit. Awesome! I haven't, I don't think I've tried any fuzzy wuzzy kits, but that sounds awesome. And I've also not tried any owls. That might be a one to try in the new year. That's a, I shouldn't have a cup because I can do... <laughs> Sorry guys. CJ, glow in the dark Yoda. Uh-huh. I'll have to do it if I can manage to create my own glow in the dark things. Because I believe the hair dyes I talked about last week, I believe they have a glow in the... Well, it's UV reactive. I don't think any of them are actual glow in the dark. Um, They're all UV reactive. I think the hair dye does come in a green. It certainly comes in a yellow. I've seen blue. I've used pink. It was great fun. Um think it comes in a green so glow in the dark because that that genius i really want to make a baby yoda i want to make something glow in the dark i think you've got that would be so cute uh catherine um you've been making faux fur pom-poms today 30 orders <laughs> and finishing off a dog jumper ordered you out tomorrow oh yes i know uh, this time of year it is literally as I think I said last week anyway as well there'll be shops that haven't done so amazingly great just now so they'll be sitting being quiet and the the difference the difference between your end of year being ridiculously amazing and quiet it's so it's so little this I don't think there's many people at all that go yes I had quite a reasonable Christmas it's either uh, or hmm, that was a bit rubbish <laughs> there's no happy medium it just you're gonna have like one year it was fairly rubbish and then out of nowhere the next year suddenly the lights all turned on and you're like what just happened <laughs> so yeah i've had about two three weeks now i've had my orders closed off and i'm just finishing everything out <clears throat> shabby wonder hello from swansea hello there Crafting Memories, hello from Tennessee. You're working on a baby blanket and some flip top gloves. I was reading quickly there. <laughs> so I um I read flip flop gloves. Now I don't think I don't think Americans call them flip flops. I know Australia and New Zealand call what I'm thinking of as flip flops. They call them thongs. But it's the beach weary stuff you put on your feet and I was just thinking flip flop gloves that sounds brilliant but flip top gloves I know exactly what you mean the kind of mitteny things yeah, awesome <clears throat> Wendy hello you've started selling in Hartisan is that, an, is that a new platform I don't think I've heard of that one cool name Hartisan <laughs> I think it's cool it sounds a bit xanadu -y, but it also sounds a bit like a surgical operation <laughs> but cool hey if anyone finds other good platforms it's always good to share and let us know how they're going some will be good um uh, Duana, yes they're flip-flops in the u.s cool <laughs> uh, we're all we're all nations divided by a common language i'm never sure exactly which i know a lot of our terms are different across the world so it's flip-flops in the u.s cool good to know we've got one in common Right, I will get on now, as I said, oh, that's a good coffee, um, salted, salted espresso um, sweetener in it and coffee, it's really good. Right, this came with shipping to around £17. Um, I should, I, you couldn't read that, could you? Um, <laughs> Yeah, that was my address, not theirs anyway. I'm not blaming the people. I know it costs that much for them to ship. It can't be helped, but yeah, ouch. Um, so nobody else order this stuff. We'll find a way to do it. Um, okay, so, but let's open it up. I haven't even opened it. 
<laughs> I'm excited to see it, but yeah, it it's really, really not going to be worth that money. Um, because in contrast, well, most of my other, my core wool is about £1.60 for 100 grams. Um, my tops are between about two and maybe four, two and six pounds for a hundred grams. And I'm not even sure what weight this was, but it's my own fault. Okay, there's my invoice. Oh, that's cute. We've got a hand, handwritten thing on it. Thank you so much for your order. That's cute. Um, yes, that was. So the the item itself was six sixty seven, which um. Doo -doo -doo one ounce of it that's another problem i buy stuff in grams i don't know how much an ounce is so it's an ounce so it's not hideously expensive if you're in the states um yeah she came from the states it's the delivery that took it up to 17.55 that is a lot did something just fall out of there yeah. yes found a business card in there so if anyone is interested and this is cool we don't we know i'm not endorsing this because i haven't even opened it yet but it's cute and Blue Barn Fibre was the name of this shop. Eco-friendly, hand-painted yarn and fibre cruelty-free. So I love all of that. I don't know what on earth she's dyeing this with. That sounds exciting. So if you're in the States, that sounds pretty cool. Blue Barn Fibre. Um, hand-painted yarn, butter silk, fibre beans, rolags, art bats, long locks, custom blended combed tops. So all sounds, all sounds good. Um, Wendy, it's new within the last two year, ten years. Sorry, heart is on. Yeah, I'm so slow. I'm just, I'm, I'm dragging out the suspense here and finishing my coffee. <laughs> Lily tree, exciting. Gigsy art, hello there. Um, CJ, one of the YouTube beauty channels started adding an 18 plus disclaimer to the beginning of her videos. Her videos are aimed at adults, but I think she's covering herself just to make sure. Um, actually, YouTube have told us that that kind of disclaimer isn't going to work or not not work. But they, I haven't found it since. But I did. I did hear an announcement saying things like us making our felt videos shouldn't be a problem so i'm giving it a try hey if if i get sued in january all feel free to come to my bail <laughs> but th this should be being sensible also here's here's tempting fate and everything i do feel that the ftc is going to sue some people is going to go after some people when this goes live in january They'll go after the people they can find easily, make a couple of examples, and then things will be sorted out. So none of us are huge YouTubers, so fingers crossed we'll be okay. I mean, if they come after me for 42 grand, they'll be, well, firstly, they'll be chasing me down in Scotland and that's not gonna happen. And yeah, they'll they'll be um incredibly lucky to be able to find a fair if i can find 42 grand down the back of the sofa i'm i'm happy to split some of it with them gigsy it's so early what time is it for you it's four in the evening well four in the afternoon here um the laughing tarantula hello there so pleased to have caught you've missed a few yeah good to see you again um eatsy has been hectic i'm glad to hear that well I'm, I'm not i know it's super stressful but also really lovely i am so looking forward to slowing down the pace of production i still have orders that need doing over the christmas period but it's gonna get less crazy hopefully i also have a few drawings to do for my new shop I got another order from that, so yay, happy. Right. I've teased you all long enough. And I'm not gonna be able to show you the glow in the darkness of this just now because I don't have any UV lights and I don't think this camera would pick it up. This is something I'll have to do with a better camera. Right, is there anything else in there? No, we're done. Right, the maid can get that. So this is what I got. That's interesting. Right, can is the camera gonna pick that up? But it's, it looks like, if anyone bought in the past, um, I think it was recycled plastic bottle fibre. So it's very fluffy, 
but there's also chunks of very finely crimped stuff it's definitely i'm going to go out on a limb and say this is definitely an unnatural fiber i don't know what it's made of it's very soft right can i can i actually show you these bits does that show up it's like a kind of short crimped fiber but most of it is like cotton wool wow this is interesting it's way more like cotton wool than actual usual carded bats or tops um i do not it's definitely not a natural it smells mainly of soap i think oh and something a little slightly plasticky i think oh every bit smells different it smells very faintly of something i kind of recognized from my childhood that's <laughs> That's absolutely useless for all of you, but I'm going to say this is pr probably some kind of a plastic fibre turned into a turned into a fluffy fibre. Super, super fluffy, super soft. Um, I suppose we should try a bit and see how it felt. That's kind of precious because <laughs> it's so expensive. I think, right, we'll put the rest away. I think it's going to be a bit of a pig to felt, to be honest. I mean, it certainly, it smooshes down to nothing. That's me put 90% of it back in that bag. It is super fluffy and light. Uh, that texture is really weird, but the actual staple length of this, it's, it's short, short pieces, which we all know I'm not the world's biggest fan of, but let's, let's try. I'm starting with a... 38 twist felting needle which this is it's a pretty butch needle for me for this size it's yeah, oh, yeah it's felting it's it's deforming nicely actually i'm gonna say this needle's too much so yeah 40 twist oh wow yeah because this needle if you can hear that this this needle is normally too a little bit too fine for starting stuff off, but it's really grabby. So this is gonna felt down. This is gonna felt down fast, but be difficult to get smooth, and um, because every stab seems to be really deforming it. If if you all know what I mean, and a forty twist is a fairly fine finishing needle. So yeah, we'll see. I'm gonna sit and felt this for a minute. Uh, Giggsy, it's 8am. Oh yeah, 8am on a Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me. I did not see 8am. Oh, tell a lie. I saw I saw 6am and I saw 8am because Ben had an upset tummy. Um, <laughs> but then I went back to bed. Um, Veronica, yay! Good to catch you late. Thank you so much. Thanks for joining me. Uh, Lily, not what you were expecting. Glow in the dark, but glow in the dark baby Jesus face. I'm going to the bad fire, <laughs> but could do, yeah. But we'll see how, how this works. I just want to see if I can get a relatively smooth ball out of this. I will put the rest away in a safe place up there. Um, but yeah, this, I can't wait to sort of get hold of UV lights and try dyeing other stuff and see what we can get. I wasn't expecting it to be quite so snow white. I was expecting a bit of a colour. Like usually glow in the dark things have a bit of like a yellowy shade to them. Oh, oh, right. Can I? <laughs> no, if I switch the lights off, this camera will just totally die on us, won't it? Um, I'm just wondering, can I actually show the camera this glow in the darkness? No, I can't make the camera go dark. <laughs> but it is actually glowing. I'm good, right? So I'm gonna have to set up the good camera and film this properly. But peering, if I put it down my jumper, yep. <laughs> it is actually. It. I thought it was just gonna be UV reactive, but it does. To be fair to them, it does what it says on the tin, because I know the when you search for like glow in the dark hair dye what comes up is uv reactive hair dye not glow in the dark 
for this might actually work. Right, so I'm going to have to figure out how to film in the dark. <laughs> but yay, I'll try. I'll try and get a picture once I come off air and I'll put it up. If you're not a member of Pam Duffy's Crafty Friends on Facebook, pop along and we'll see what we can do with that. But yeah, um, interesting is, is all I can say. I don't know whether it's good or not. Uh, Duana, it had a little yellow hue. Did you did you see it when I <laughs> when I tried that? Because it is literally, uh, what's it showing on camera? Um, it is bright white to me. Um, obviously cameras pick up things differently. Uh, yeah, does it have a slot? Mm, hard to tell, really. <laughs> That's not the best way to do these things. But but yes, I was expecting a yellow hue. This is interesting. What I'll say just now, what it's feeling like is the center is getting kind of denser while the outside is still really not looking good at all. So I think it's going to be a pig to felt with, but it could be a top coat. I'm, I'm sure it's more designed as just to put accents for things. Oh, fairy wings too. That would be good. Just l use little accents for the fairy wings. We'll, we'll show see. I'm going to experiment. That's the plans. Oh, CJ, you saw blue-green hue as well. Oh, wow, cool. So the webcam is doing something. If the, hmm. Just trying to think how I can actually do it. I'll, I'll, I'll do it on my other camera when I come. Because by the time I come off air, it will be properly dark outside. So it's when I switch the lights off, I'll see. So currently we're charging this stuff. Yeah, because that's pretty cool. Literally, it just came out of the bag and it's, it's doing okay. But yeah, I don't think it's going to be the easiest thing in the world to work with. I know if some of you have tried some other, it's it's a little more like trying to felt the some of the cheap teddy bear stuffing stuff. It's a nice. It it's not as plasticky feeling as that. It 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 feels like cotton wool. It literally feels like cotton wool. So I suppose it could be a cotton. I don't know. Um. But yeah, it feels like cotton wool. I don't know what the strange crimps are, and they are... Will the camera... Can you manage this camera? Can you focus, little guy? I don't think it really can, but these little crimpy bits... It's an interesting texture. Camera, can you? Um, <clears throat> and they're, they're hard to felt in, but... Overall, very strange. But it's interesting. Um, and and I ordered it so you don't have to. But like I, I've not been able to see this in the UK at any point. Um, so yeah, okay. Actually, it's kind of once I'm getting these fuzzy ends tucked in, I think it's gonna felt down into a very dense little ball. Um, I can't remember how big it was what I started with, but I think that'll go down. Yeah, that's gonna go down to about half its size again if I keep going with that but we really don't have all day to <laughs> sit and watch me felting a glow in the dark thing that's not glowing that brilliant content content Pam just genius <laughs> but that's that right if you haven't already seen I'll give you a quick look as I say the link is in the description to this as well but we'll show you this before we do it if anyone is wanting to felt along, just go and grab your supplies of a little bit. It's going to be this little guy. It's a fairy baby or a, they call it a seed, tiny seed or bud, bud baby or just a baby suitable for fairies. But it's very much a baby Jesus. This is the free tutorial in the makers page. So everyone go along, support the makers as well. Give them a look and everything. But I'm just borrowing their tutorial. So they've got got this nice, they have a few ones they even have. Yeah, they've got a video on this. So go along, watch this and see if see how I do compared to them. Um, and full all the advice there on how to make it. But so we're going to do this together. Um, I'll show you what I'm doing. I'll go along with it, but absolutely check them out. Support them watching their video and everything because they are coming up with these wonderful ideas, not me. And 
We've used Maker's Kits a few times, had the instructions from them on that, and I have found every one of their kits, their descriptions of how to make stuff has been super useful. Every single time there's been basically things that I hadn't thought of or different ways that I wouldn't have done a thing and it's ended up a bit easier than how I would generally make it. So I like how they make things. I like how they think. Um, so I'm hoping, I, I think I had a quick look through this and it does seem very much different to how I would have done it. I probably would have made a kind of baby and then wrapped it up. <laughs> not that not arms and legs, but I, I would have made it differently. So I'm kind of excited to try this. It's going to be a super easy project. It's a proper beginner's project. So if anyone's up for felting along, um, just grab your stuff if you have it. A needle felting needle, the main colour that the baby's going to be wrapped up in, the face for the baby and a little bit of hair colour. It's a Waldorf type style so no need for faces which makes them so much cuter because your imagination adds the face. So hands up if anyone's felting along, I am. Um, and yeah I think this could be super cute in a little felted nativity. Right to it, well first of all <clears throat> I thought about the colours that I should get and I have a couple of blues that have been in some of my my maker's boxes so I think of I think it's because Mary is often painted in blue um, but I thought it'd be nice to wrap Jesus in the blue I've got a few blues and a bit of a green so I'm just going to try and blend these up a little bit to make a more interesting colour that's my plan so while I'm doing this, what colours would you make him? I mean, I was tempted with purple. I'm always tempted with purple. But I thought the blues is a more Jesus-y colour. And it could be cute for, like, fairy babies as well. What are they calling them? Little seed babies. Which is so cute. There's like a little story in there. Or bean babies. Um, so I'm just pulling this apart, restacking it and pulling it apart and that blends the colour slightly in a kind of variegated fashion so you kind of get little stripes through it so it's not all one colour and mainly just because I had all this stuff lying about and it's nice to use it up. Oh. And I find the Maker's Wolves, if anyone's interested in any of them, not sponsored. But I've enjoyed the Maker's Wolves. It's a shof softer staple length than I usually work with. And what that wh what I mean by the staple length is the length of the actual individual fibres are fairly short. And um, when you pull them down to their, their shortest form. And in general, I don't usually like that. It does make this pulling apart and restacking a little bit harder because everything's so tiny. Um, in general, I found that really difficult to felt, but it's actually, I've been quite happy with how the maker stuff has felted. So, yay. Um, right, this isn't working. So, as I say, it's not so easy to, to blend, so I'm going to fluff it up sideways as well. Just tearing it apart, sticking it back together. Just trying to get a mix of colours. There's going to be chunks. As I say, this is much easier if it's a long staple length because you can pull out long bits over each other. Whereas this, I pull for like two seconds and it's it's already broken apart. But that's that's just my preference. <laughs> Lily Tree better get her Santa hat finished first. You haven't finished your Santa hat. <laughs> that's been a week. I'm disappointed. <laughs> I know. I'm sure it's the same for so many crafty people and um, we have too many ideas, too many projects we want to get done and you get stuck on the things that you need to get done. Okay, that's not as good as it could be but let's see what happens. So, first bit of the process, um, I want to roll the main wool bat into a tight short sausage shape and leave some for later. So, we're going to take off a wee bit it just says some wisps for later it's not talking about much um, that should probably do and this is it does tell you yeah um, so this is gonna set what size your item is gonna be so if you roll it up really tight you can see roughly what size your baby's gonna be so if you want a bigger baby add more fibers if you want a smaller one add less but I think this is good so 
aiming for a kind of sausage shape and then I'm just going to felt this into into a bean into a sausage shape um, so what are they saying have all your materials at the ready that's such good advice I, I won't say I don't have them all at the ready everything is in a pile at the side I'll find it I'm gonna go with a 38 needle just to get this started I roll most of the main wall bat into a tight short sausage shape leave some wisps for later if you squeeze the wool tightly into this short sausage shape, it will give you an idea of how the ba how big the baby will be. As ever, good advice. Uh, use your medium felting needle and felt the wispy ends of the rolled up wool into itself. Uh, make sure it's placed on the felting mat. Bad me. Everybody else, be safe and use your felting mat. Um... Uh, with a few stabs, you should be able to secure your shape and stop it popping open again um, and then felt it all over to make it nice and firm and the size should be now the size of a broad bean or a butter bean I think my baby's even I'm going to actually go and make things slightly bigger than they say usually if anyone um, if anyone ever follows Serafina um, or I think she's calling herself Sa Sarah Oh, I can't remember her surname now, but I think she's changed from Serafina now on her YouTube channel. But sometimes I try and felt along with her and I always go half size of what she's saying. It's something I fancy doing. I'm not sure how it works. I've seen people on YouTube do like following along a tutorial video. And I, w I wondered about the idea of following along a Serafina tutorial sort of in real time because I do that sometimes when she releases a new video or a new series of videos when I'm watching it I'll just pick up the stuff and start felting along with her but boy she's quick <laughs> even with all the editing and everything it can be hard to keep up but I, I wonder if that would be something that'd be kind of cool I also wonder if that would be something that her people would come after me and sue me for not entirely sure hey <laughs> cheery thought but I thought it could be kind of fun trying to follow along and having sort of my my reaction <laughs> as as I'm getting behind or what what I love about her tutorials if you haven't done them I remember I think the mouse was the first one that I did and you're sitting and she's going add a tack make a taco shape make a ghost shape make a this shape and I'm sitting there going this is rubbish this is never gonna make anything this is terrible and you're putting them all together and then you're like how how did that make a mouse and more importantly how does she see it that that all these shapes stack together or make a mouse i just can't think like that but amazing so you'll see my face going this is rubbish i'm hating this this oh oh look at that <laughs> bixie's in the house hello there bixie boo <laughs> hey guys good to see you um i'm thinking I'm thinking this might possibly be my second last live before Christmas. Um, so if you guys let me know what what you think we should be doing next week if you're gonna be in, if you're gonna be here. I haven't decided a hundred percent what I'm doing, but the following week I might be driving or sleeping or something, and then we're into the Christmas time. So if you let me know what you think we should do for 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 our team Christmas party next week. <laughs> <laughs> but do you want to talk about eatsy things do you want to talk about the future do you want have you any fears things you want to talk about or do you want to felt something fun together let me know um or do you want me to, i suppose i could like order kits in the time um because <laughs> it, it doesn't even have to be felting kits actually i had some fun at the beginning of the year doing the wouldn't have time for these because they come from japan but doing the food kits and um, the food toy kits um from japan the popping kitchen that's the name of them they were great fun i was actually thinking there's either saw the one where i did work the sushi and there's like two solutions one you drop into the other and it does the spherification thing where it made like um little fish egg balls so it um it felted it felted felted on my brain <laughs> so it um it 
firms up the surface and leaves it liquid in the middle and I was just thinking of that because um, mum often makes um, toiletries like really really cool bath oils and all sorts of things and I remembered when I was a kid teenager you used to get like bath oil pearls that seemed like big versions of these and I wondered if you could using the solutions mixing in with the oil if you could do spherification on bath oil to make bath oil beads I don't know has anyone has anyone tried that before um yeah it sounds fun to do anyway <laughs> Bexy make some call yeah I could do my call next week that's calls for Eatsy <laughs> we can make our Santa project okay there's an idea calls for Eatsy and that that should be a simple kind of thing to do so I can talk about anything that anyone's worried about I'm gonna have to find a Santa hat wear my Christmas jumper <laughs> and Lily Tree hopes there'll be mince pies but you can bring along mince pies I don't eat carbs really well sometimes I do but I generally don't eat carbs so no mince pies for me um but oddly I mum I was gonna speak to you about <laughs> um, one thing mum's done over the years is she's made me this great well I use it as a makeup remover it's a hand cleaner thing and for a couple of years she made and it's coconut oil and Epsom salts which are a great mix and then she's put in some kind of scent and it's a Christmassy scent and the scent just smells like mince pies literally like not just the spices and everything but you can smell like raisins in it you can smell dried fruit or get a feeling of it so I just wondered if there was things that we could make using that mix of spice mix of fragrances to make foods that was like mince pies without actually being carby so there's there's an idea because there's all sorts of things you can do um I can make sort of pastry and biscuits and stuff out of almond flour which are lovely but not ra raisins are too carby um so we have to think see like chocolate chocolate sponge is a good old alternative to raisins I, in my world i never did like raisins much i was never a fan of mince pies <laughs> um but yeah so we we have a kind of baby shape here what i'm gonna do because the the face end's gonna have more work done on, done on it than the bottom i'm just gonna make the top i'm gonna make one side a little bit thinner than the other basically so I can do all the face um, but I think the, the colours oh it always looks more crazy on the camera camera can you can you stop doing that can you stop making things look more crazy than they are but I'm just making this a little bit narrower at the top and next part of this stop going upside down next part of this is to use your flesh pink wool tops and wrap it around one third of the top of the bean shape right it does say you can use bats as well and i don't have any tops in a flesh color but i do have uh this was from the makers anyway a kind of flesh color so i'm just taking off a little bit of this because i'm still planning to do my faces tutorial in the new year um because yeah i really enjoyed making little needle felted they're up there somewhere little needle felted faces so we're going to take the pink and wrap it around the top third of this little fella and just felt it in place um felt this down so it covers the whole top of the shape you should still be able to use your medium medium felting needle and i would say yeah i'm using my most stabby needle um i actually get asked a whole lot about the needles to use and it super depends on what you're doing and what fibers you're doing and how you work and um, because I tend to make things fairly small, tend to use smaller needles. As I say, this is a 38 and this is the most stabby I can deal with. Anything more stabby just gets totally annoying for me. But I know people that work with a normal, uh, their normal work on a 36 needle or even a 34. I've heard even low, the lower the number, the more thick, the more stabby the needles are. Um, but I find getting down to a 36, literally every stab is taking so much more force that it takes me longer 
um, because I can't felt as quickly. So although each stab is doing more work, I can get less stabs in, so a slightly finer needle for me, I end up felting quicker. Um, but everyone has a different speed of felting. They don't, if, if you don't necessarily felt very quickly and you're a kind of more of a f fiercely stabbing person, then maybe a more firmer needle would suit you better. And I think some people use them, especially if you're doing big creations and you're felting pieces together, a big stabby needle can do good, good joining. W Words are difficult. <laughs> Losing the ability to speech. Um, okay, so we have, that looks very bizarre. We have a pink top and I'm supposed to decide, I, I should actually read ahead, not actually just jump ahead. Um, so choose the smoothest, neatest part of the pink covering to be the face. <laughs> Which part of this faceless blob looks the most like a face? Um, I think I like that bit better. It's all pretty similar. And then we've got to take the remainder of the wool and cover the head, leaving just a face exposed. So I'm making a kind of hood out of this stuff. Um, where, there's my face. So I'm just going to bring this up and ooh, up and over the face the best I can. <laughs> that kind of looks cute, doesn't it? Um, I'll throw some of the other colours poking through the face, but still that looks kind of cute. So I'll pop that round and felt that so it covers all now this is where I say that I would have done things differently and this is not right. I love the makers that have different methods. I would have just felt it in the shape of a face there rather than felt round the whole thing in flesh and then make a hood over it. But I can see why this is sort of a an easier beginner's technique to do it this way and you can get more, a little more sort of detail and making this feel more like a hood that's covering a face. So yeah, I think that's a really good idea. I will just felt this all over. Oh, nose is running. Um, felt the cover down with your medium felting needle so it becomes one with the rest of the main coloured wool. I love that way you said, so it becomes one with it. Sounds very, very hippie. It's very true as well. You want to blend these fibres down so it doesn't look like you've just stuck something on top of it. They they all blend together and become one. <laughs> Sorry makers girls, I've, I'm laughing at you when I shouldn't be. Um, but yeah, that's like I say, super quick. And I can see if you're making a set of nativity characters Jesus doesn't have to have much much detail and also it did look super cute with the fairies so yeah nice little nice little project really good beginner project um have wisps of your dark brown or black at the ready and twist the wool in your fingers into a strand so we're just going to make a little bit of hair for the little guy um i've usually got some black kicking around there it is um so again, just going to twist this into a little piece. Um, and then just going to put it around his head to give him a hairline. So just kind of popping it on here. And I'm just going to, oh, can I show you and do it without stabbing myself? So I'm just going to felt this sort of around where I've done the hood. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> um, Oh, sorry, whoever's joined, I can't, I can't read any of that. Um, looks awesome though, but hello, <laughs> hello, but sorry, I can't read that. Um, yeah, so now this has to be one of the quickest Felton projects I've done live. Um, yeah, I think that's maybe 15 minutes we, we've been at this. So yeah, if anyone wants to get in the production line for making tiny, tiny babies, this is the way to do it. Rosani's in the house. Hello there. Good morning, Rosani. <laughs> we're we're just making baby Jesus. And I unpacked the glow in the dark wool and had a go at that. Um so you can see anyone just joining, yeah, I've I I've done a little bit of glow in the dark wool. <laughs> and so if you watch it on the replay, kind of interesting. Not what I expected. 
and I will be putting up pictures of it in Pam Duffy's Crafty Friends later on. Right. So, what's everyone's plans for next week then? I think we're nearly just about finished with the stream. So, let's just hear what you're what you're up to, what the plans for the week ahead are. I am going to finish my felting, get all the orders packed, and I think I might take a small amount of time, time off to myself to head in, head out to the shops, have a nosy round, buy some, buy some stuff for me and my friends, and maybe even take in the, take in the Glasgow Christmas lights because they are always pretty. Um, so I, I might might film along with that just just for the Facebook group I think this time it doesn't need to be a YouTube video we'll just do that for the Facebook group I'll show you because Glasgow does put on a good effort at Christmas it was pretty cool last year it was good fun okay guys I think I think this little guy <laughs> is kind of done that was cute so don't forget oh, I've got to show you this um this is the end of the makers with their their little bundles of babies. I think that is super cute. Um, finally shape the baby so it resembles more the shape of a bean by making it more rounded at the back and pulled in at the front, ready to be given the arms of your favorite fairy mummy. <laughs> right, so I'm just shaping him a little bit, but that is super adorable. Um, so yeah. Most importantly, if you missed the start of this, the link to the Maker's free tutorial and they have a video in there as well, that's in the comments below. So if you've enjoyed this, me messing about with their tutorial, go along, give them a bit of love, give a heart on their video. Um, so yeah, and vi visit the site, show them because these, these ladies are absolutely awesome in the needle felting community. Um, so yeah, go and get a hold of them give them a bit of love because <laughs> we are using their tutorials for free well they're given this one for free but they have super helped us through the year with lots of different projects and things so that's the makers with two s's because because they they both have s's in their name sophie and steffi um is the the girls at the makers again super nice to know the people that you're buying from um Right, Lily's saying take some time for Christmasing. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Rosani's making elf and gnome ornaments for family gifts. That sounds cool. I bet they're awesome. I, If anyone hasn't seen Rosani's style, it's really cool. The masquerade, cutely, cutely grotesque, wonderful stuff in papier-mâché. Sammy Strawberry is <laughs> going to surprise your husband with a needle-felted army air court badge in frame. <laughs> Awesome! That's I right. You have to share that with us when you're done. That sounds good. Uh, River City Creative, enjoy. Thank you, Duana. Trying to finish up your own shopping. Yep, <laughs> I know that feeling. Uh, working on my Etsy shop and marketing plans for the rest of the month. Oh, new product launch for January. Non-stop here. Awesome. Good plan. Yeah, that's a great idea to have. Have something exciting planned for January. I'm sitting working through ideas of what videos I want to make for January. I want to get out of the gate in the new year running and I've got I've got some hopefully good ideas. I want to do a lot more science, a lot more maths because to be perfectly honest the advice that eatsy has been given us has not been the most great so rather than listen well listen to Eatsy's advice but I want to do some maths which is why and thank you all in in the Facebook group that responded to my last post asking for some some stats from your shop that is super helpful I'm working through that just now so if we get a lot of data from crafty shops you know we're not looking at the biggest shops out there that are doing print on demand or you know something high volume normal normal people shops and I really like I really appreciate that so I'll use all that data and that'll be one of the videos in the new year um okay shiflet is that right finishing orders by the 16th and taking a few weeks off that sounds perfect yes i think that that is something 
I should definitely plan better so that I'm well I'm doing good I'm I'm I should I should be finished by definitely by the 12th with my Christmas orders I'm still gonna felt a bit to to finish the orders that need done by January but I should be finished before the middle of next week so yay not that I still have plenty of other work to do but still sounds great my shop will be calmed down um right guys I think I think that's him that's my little baby we have a what did I do with the glow in the dark ball? Oh, I see it. Yes, we have a very bizarre little glow in the dark bead, which I'm going to take a picture of as soon as I'm done here. It, it should be charged up nicely. Um, yeah, so super quick stream. Awesome. Don't make shrieky voices into the microphone, Pam. It's not fair on people. Sorry if you've got speakers on. Right, guys, thank you so much for hanging out. This has been awesome. I hope you have a great week. Um, make a baby. <laughs> uh, yeah, nice project. I think that was really easy. If someone's a beginner to Felton, really, really easy little project to do. Right, let's figure out how I shut this down, and I'll speak to you next week. Thank you so much.